Good morning, it's the 11th of December, 2023. Just walking down to Bond Church. Been a massive uh, landslide along up the landslip, the place known as the landslip, uh, between Bond Church and Shanklin. Literally just over there where I'm pointing now. Very close to where my poor old stranded, written off van is. It's okay. But I uh, hope everyone else is I'm within the undercliff now, which is this lower terrace below the high chalk downs, which you can see above us. And the undercliff is Europe's largest rotational landslip, which essentially means it's all tumbling down towards the sea. And as the erosion of the at the foot of the cliffs here take soil away it kind of uh, activates the landslips above within the undercliff so it's all very urbanized with these houses and cottages and villas uh, we're in Bond Church now Bond Church Pond is just over there but yeah it's just it's a very active area of ground movement parts of the toe of the sea cliffs are protected by hard coastal defences but not the bit that's just collapsed so the newly collapsed bit is called the landslip because it's an area that isn't defended can't be defended because the sea cliffs there are just way too high and they're basically made of sandy gaunt clay blue slipper and uh for just very sandy wet soils that are just constantly being eaten away at by the sea directly above that the terraces that's where we've had a major landslip overnight and it really is a major one no actual houses have been damaged but um quite a few gardens i think 20 properties have been evacuated so far um so it kind of puts me and my stranded van in perspective uh, at least i can move the well i can't move the van now because it's written off <laughs> But in principle, I could move the van if I was in a vulnerable area. But people in actual houses can't. Just going on to Bond Church Village Road now. Head down that way. Hello, my lovely van. Oh dear. Anyway, let's carry on. So the road ahead has been closed. That's referring to Leeson Road, I think, which is way above the undercliff. Here's Bond Church Village Pond. Very pretty. So let's go up Shore Road up here. Get back down onto the Esplanade to Monks Bay. So just to try to explain, we're in a, I'm on the undercliff now, so up there's a chalk downland, uh, and I think it's sort of like the 1840s, there was a massive uh, landslide here, and along the entire length of this kind of southeast coastline of the Isle of Wight between St Catherine's Point in the west and Dunno's, the landslip in the east, which is roughly where we are now, um, the landslip created this lower terrace where we are now so there's an inner cliff face just up there and then there's this which is the undercliff which is just a spoil from that landslip basically a whole mass of basically unconsolidated green sand slabs chalk and gaunt clay and the gaunt clay is the or black slipper is the is it black slipper or blue slipper one of the two is the troublesome thing because that's where the water seeps through from the downs above so you can imagine loads and loads of rainfall on the downs above gradually very slowly seeps through um, and cascades down through the undercliff where we are now seeps through all this soil and lubricates that gaunt clay and causes ground movement so the terraces massive slabs very heavy they gradually push down towards the sea and at the base here along the toe where the sea meets the land here meets the base of the undercliff you've got some defended areas in terms of, you know, by defended, I mean, over the years, coastal defences have been put in, so concrete, uh, apron, seawall along the base of the cliff 
in some areas. So where I am now, there is a concrete sea defence. Just to my left um, is where the landslip is, which is not defended. And then to my right is Ventnor, about a kilometre away, which is mostly defended at, at the toe. So there's mostly sea walls along the coast. Um, and that goes as far as uh, Steep Hill Cove. There's a few gaps in the sea defences. And then beyond that, going towards St Catherine's Point, there are no sea defences along the coastline at all. Um, so it's very active. So basically when the sea eats away at the sea cliffs down here, down at the bottom of the undercliff, that basically releases all the terraces, all the kind of active land slips above. And basically they get pulled down by gravity. And that's what creates landslips. Well, a combination of the erosion at the toe by the sea and all that water seeping down from those high downs above. You can see how tall the downs are. So when it rains up there, all the water eventually comes down here very, very slowly. But if there's a lot of water, like there was August, then all that water eventually comes down into these terraces in the undercliff, lubricates the gulp clay, and that's what causes ground movement. So an entirely natural process, very difficult to defend against. Although in this area, it's been done done very well from a coastal defence point of view, because there are concrete defences down here. But the bit that slipped away last night um, is called the landslip, and that area has no sea defences because the cliffs are just way too tall. So it's technically, it just wouldn't work. You know, your low coastal defences would soon be swamped by... Um, cliffs falling down from above you know it's literally tens of meters high those cliffs and they're all sand basically sandy clay gawk clay with some big slabs of chalk and green sand anyway let's go down to the actual toe of the coast here so we're now down in bond church itself at monks bay you can see the uh toe defenses here the the base of the undercliff bond church pottery is defended by these pretty hefty bits of coastal defence. Getting quite old now, but still doing the job. And they carry on all the way to Ventnor along that way. But along this way, they kind of finish here because beyond this point, the cliffs just get way too tall and way too unstable, so they're very difficult to defend. So yeah, the next big bit of hard sea defence is like this. Concrete walls is that way to the east in Shanklin and there's a big gap between the two you've got Monks Bay here which is has got these big piles of kind of riprap not really riprap big uh, boulders basically hard granite boulders by the looks of it just to defend this little bay and keep the beach here and then just go around the corner there there's no defences at all they end and it's above that where the massive landslip has occurred so directly above where I am now it's one of my favourite little wild bays in Ventnor, or in Bond Church, Monk's Bay. Absolutely gorgeous, and what a cracking day as well. Just going to look round the corner here, just so get a view of the sheer cliffs, just to illustrate the issue here. Okay, so I forgot about this little stretch of hard defences here, built to protect these houses and slow down the movement directly above. Uh, quite a lot of water cascading out just there. So yeah, the, the, the water that's coming down from the downs will take a few months to get here after it actually fell from the rain. So basically the water that's seeping through now is from August. August this year, which is a very wet month. Quite a lot of water coming through here. So we August water has reached the undercliff. September was not as wet as August. August was incredibly wet. September was not as wet, but then October was really, really wet again. And we got, you know, a month or two before September, October, water starts to seep through into the terraces of the undercliff and starts to lubricate that gulp clay. So I think it could be quite a troubling winter in the undercliff because we don't really know where these where this particular landslip is going to end when it's going to stabilize itself what we don't need are any storms hitting the base of the cliffs 
especially not southeasterly gales, which we don't tend to get here anyway. But uh, easterlies could be not good news for down here because the coastline kind of veers round a bit, so it's more exposed to easterlies and southeasterlies. But anyway, the coastal defence is end just around this corner. Uh, primarily because the cliffs just get so tall. Oh yeah, the sea is really muddy here. You can really see it. Pulled a load of mud down from these cliffs. So these are the cliffs we're talking about. So they get taller than this. But you can see they're just sandy, kind of erodible. This is the soil we're talking about. Just friable. Um, this is where the defences end and you can see the sea is cutting in here. And if you tried to build concrete defences below that it would just be buried in a winter and that would be it. But this whole terrace basically directly above is where the massive landslide has occurred so all this lot is pushing down with the sheer weight of what's above it. Uh, but yeah the sea's incredibly muddy full of sediment from the cliffs. Not sure if I can get above this really to get any more video footage. I assume the path that goes through the area above has been closed. So I assume I'll encounter the police in a minute. We shall see. Let's go up this slope. Just walk this way a little bit. Don't think I'm going to get very far because we're entering the landslip, which uh, I assume I'm, I assume the police have closed it off. It's not going to be safe to walk through there. But yeah, directly above these buildings ahead of us is where this big landslip occurred. Let's see how far I can get along here. Just going into the landslip now. I'm only going to go to the top here, no further. So right on the edge of where the landslip occurred now. Very wild. It's a lot of home oak ceilings in it. Just dropping down again into into uh, Monk's Bay, uh, so I can walk along the coastal defences, back to Wheeler's Bay, and then on on into Ventnor. And here we are, walking west now. 
a bit blowy so I won't do much video recording along here because you'll just get annoyed. So we're still between Monks Bay and uh, Wheelers Bay here in the Undercliff. So these low chalk cliffs, uh, these, these chalk cliffs have basically been squashed down, pushed down by the sheer weight of uh, the Undercliff Terrace above. Um, and it is feasible to build these kind of coastal defences where the cliffs are relatively stable. I mean, it's not that stable, as you can see, those are spoiled, but um, you know, they're harder chalk, but it's really soft chalk. You know what I mean, though. And they're relatively low, so these defences are not going to be inundated, covered up immediately by cliff falls. Um, whereas the section we looked at earlier, the other side of Monks Bay, just over there to the east of here, the cliffs are a lot higher and they're all made of sandy, gilt clay mixture of all sorts of stuff. And so if you get a landslip there, it's just going to bury defences like this. Um, quickly inundate them and not really have any effect at all. So anyway, let's carry on walking. So back in the uh, relative stability of Ventnor. Uh, I really hope those uh, those homes can be made safe. Um, and 20 odd homes have been evacuated in Bonchurch due to the landslip. Um, yeah, just hope those uh, households are are okay this close to Christmas as well but um yeah not good what we don't need now is any more storms or any more very wet weather so hopefully we'll have a calm winter and they'll be able to be able to address the issues around that landslip and make it all safe and habitable again ah. it's a lovely evening here though but um yeah